Things got more severe, I think things got more vivid. And I can remember at the time, kind of, I was driving in the car with her and I kind of saw... I saw some fish on the floor in the car and I kind of got more distressed as I thought, you know, there's fish swimming about, it's filling up with water, and kind of her reaction to that, this kind of, that this wasn't happening, made me realise, you know, this isn't normal, not everyone experiences this, and I need to get some help, because to me, when it's affecting other people, I need to take action. That was Rich from Wigan, describing a key point in his life. Rich lives with schizophrenia, and agreed to talk to us about his experiences of living with this condition, including first noticing his symptoms, his diagnosis, his views on medication, and his hopes for the future. Aside from talking to Rich, we'll also be discussing advancements in schizophrenia treatments and how government funding has helped. Now, most people are aware of schizophrenia, but few know just how many people are living with the condition. We spoke to Tiffany Therapeutic CEO, Dr. Charles Large, who gave us some context. Um, it affects something like 0.5 to 1% of the population, and this is across the globe. So if you turn that into what that means at a, a level of a city or a town, um, a city the size of London with just over 8 million people will have more than 60,000 people suffering from schizophrenia. And what is particularly disturbing there as well is that about a third of, of, of those subjects that you see uh, will very often be homeless or in a situation where they lack any kind of, of support or ability to take care of themselves. So an extremely huge problem for also society uh, to actually cope with that. And the cost to the UK taxpayer of schizophrenia is, is in the order of three to four billion uh, in the UK. One of the most disturbing aspects about schizophrenia is the fact that it affects people in the prime of their lives. So the typical age of onset for somebody with schizophrenia is in the late teens and early 20s. So right at the point at which their life is starting to take off, they're at college or university, about to start a new job. So very, very debilitating. Before we go any further, there's someone you need to meet properly. I'm Rich. I'm a, I try to be an artist in my free time, I suppose. Uh, yeah. As I mentioned at the top of the show, Rich lives with schizophrenia and he shared how his symptoms emerged, pretty much as Charles outlined. I think where everything began with my mental health problems or issues, when I was, I think I was around 16, I'd just finished high school, there was a lot of stress going on there and I had a new relationship, exams coming up. So th there was a lot to balance already. I think it's fair to say that most people commonly associate schizophrenia with hearing voices. But as Charles explains, it's much more complex than that. People with schizophrenia typically suffer from three types of symptom. So, so the first of these, which are most commonly seen, are so-called positive symptoms. And these are symptoms like delusions or hallucinations. Now the hallucinations tend to be auditory, so hearing voices, hearing sounds. Uh, delusions tend to be delusions of grandeur, for example, believing that you are uh, some important figure. Or they may be delusions of persecution. So, for example, you believe that the CIA is out to get you. The, the second domain of symptoms are known as negative symptoms. And these include withdrawal and loss of emotion. Typically, someone with schizophrenia you will find to be very um, lacking in emotion, very flat in their, um, the way that they respond to people. And then the third cluster of symptoms which are very disabling are cognitive symptoms. And this is where people have a great deal of difficulty making sense of the world, putting their thoughts in order, understanding what they, what, what's going on around them, and also forming speech very often. As you can probably imagine, from Rich's point of view, this was an extremely confusing time. There was a lot of um, feelings of, of being anxious and being paranoid of um, my surroundings of people, but I don't think at the time that was anything really different or kind of strange it just kind of I felt that that was that was normal I would say I, I, I did try to rationalize things and my conclusion was everybody did experience these kind of 
uh, hallucinations. Well, at the time, I didn't think there was anything wrong. People saw these things, people felt these things on their skin, and it was kind of, I related it to growing up or kind of adolescence, puberty, this kind of, you know, at the time I was feeling kind of stressed or kind of, I was very emotional. It was good enough reason at the time that everyone went through it, and I just accepted that. And it wasn't just Rich who struggled with the early symptoms. You know, I tried to speak to my family and, and people around me about these kind of things, um, about the worries I had, but it was just put down to growing up and, you know, I'm not trying hard enough to kind of stick it out um, in college or, you know, I, I, I just, I was being, you know, lazy and kind of wanting to, to come back when in, in reality I was, I, was, I was afraid for my life, so. I didn't tell too many people around me, obviously the person I kind of spoke to most was kind of my partner at the time, you know, I was with this person for like seven years and I kind of, kind of vented all of this to and kind of explained to her that, you know, what was going on and, and I feel like maybe t I kind of talked about it too much because it isn't something what, you know, ev everybody understands, you just have your own kind of assumptions and, you know, you can only be so understanding, you know, with someone, so, yeah, it, I think it is a hard one to kind of process for some people, yeah. And Rich outlined some pretty harrowing symptoms that he had. I would say things did start with visuals, but it was it was very subtle. It was moving ground, it was um, distortions, the melting of objects and furniture. But a lot of it did start with tactile things. I mean, I know a lot of people described, and I can relate to kind of insects crawling on my skin it would almost feel like spiders or things beneath your skin or almost feel like you're on fire and very agitated and and like you can't get rid of rid of an itch and i think this would gradually move on to the voices this kind of dominant male kind of voice in my hand commanding me to do things for rich there was a key moment that helped him realize that he needed some outside help i was with my girlfriend at the time and she was the one who first prompted me to go and see a doctor or kind of seek help, which I've kind of denied that anything was wrong, you know, for many years and until things got more severe. I think things got more vivid. And I can remember at the time, kind of, I was driving in the car with her and I kind of saw, I saw some fish on the floor in the car and I kind of got more distressed as I thought, you know, there's fish swimming about, it's filling up with water and kind of her reaction to that, this kind of, that this wasn't happening, made me realise, you know, this isn't normal, not everyone experiences this and I need to get some help because to me, when it's affecting other people, I need to take action. So at this point, Rich decided to get help and received an official diagnosis which came with its own issues. I think my friends and family reacted um, in bewilderment, almost kind of amazement that this could happen to somebody they knew. I would say my parents were in denial about it. And um, I was, I, I thought it would be a shifting point. I thought it was gonna be like, well, this is progress. You know, we know what we're dealing with. Um, we, can, we can, I can work on it and get better. But I think the stigma or the kind of the implantation in someone's mind of this illness, it, it's still a strong one that, that people don't want to accept that part of the family is going through this or, you know, that this will kind of destroy their life. And But I would say it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. You can be in control of this and not let it control you. Which believes that there's a bigger issue that reinforces these reactions. I would say the media does have a big influence over what people think about certain psychotic illnesses, you know, schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, because they have seen it, you know, dramatised in, you know, maybe certain crime programmes. So people do immediately think that you are going to be violent to someone else or hurt someone else. When from my experience, from me and people I've known, you're more likely to hurt yourself. And um, I think there needs to be that awareness and more positive portrayals to kind of communicate that, that this isn't that abnormal and, and, and it can be understandable. And I think there has been a, a slight shift, but I, I feel like there needs to be a bigger one to, to make people understand. So what is available for people like Rich? Again, Charles provides the detail. Well, the existing treatments, the antipsychotic drugs, which are commonly used at the moment, uh, essentially only treat the positive symptoms of the disorder, so hallucinations, delusions, some of the psychotic symptoms that you see in the patients. Uh, they really don't treat 
negative symptoms or cognitive symptoms of the disorder. And these are the symptoms that give the, the really debilitating effect on, on the ability of these patients to maintain an autonomous lifestyle. Um, so any new treatment that comes forward that can treat those symptoms, that can reduce the cognitive deficit, that can improve the, the negative symptoms, would have a dramatic impact uh, on these patients and their lives. Rich experienced mixed results when he took medication. I would say the medication did affect the voices and the hallucinations. I would say, if anything, they would kind of um, tone them down, you know, they would make the voices quieter or the hallucinations less vivid. The, I think in, in blocking my thoughts, all of my thoughts, including any normal thoughts, they would take them all away. But I would still feel distressed and I would still feel very paranoid and aware of my surroundings, but in a different way. I, I'm, I'm more paranoid now because, you know, I've put on weight, I've kind of not taken care of myself because I've not got the energy to, the strength to. So it was kind of more re real, basically. I was taking the meds and it was making this paranoia real because it was just stripping away my confidence in, in different ways. I said the medication I was given, I think especially first starting out in these kind of antipsychotics, you know, these big drugs, these would kind of, you know, floor me is kind of the word, they would kind of just knock me down. Uh, you know, I started off on something and it was just completely overwhelming and uh, I would feel like, I think the, the good, good way to describe it is wet, wading through mud in my mind. It wouldn't just stop the thoughts, stop the racing mind. It would take away them all. It would take my ability to kind of think or kind of process things, react to things. It would make me more forgetful. And uh, I remember an incident uh, with a friend at the cinema. I was just kind of like, I just fell asleep. and this is what it felt like i was kind of i was functioning but i wasn't me because i was falling asleep and i was kind of drooling so it did make me become more self-conscious you know things like weight gain will knock you back so it will make you think is this helping me or you know is this really worth it so what is the future of schizophrenia medication or well, tiffany therapeutics are working on new treatments as charles explains so Tiffany was founded um, in 2011 and Giuseppe Alvaro and myself had been working in GlaxoSmithKline where we've been part of their neuroscience research division and for a long time been working on disorders like schizophrenia. Um, when we set up Tiffany, we were very keen to continue that theme and to see what we could do uh, in a new environment to bring forward novel treatments for these extremely dramatic and, uh, and serious disorders. Or Tiffany used Innovate UK funding to further the development of these products. Innovate UK has been essential to, to bring this programme forward. Uh, when we founded Or Tiffany, the proposal at the time was to develop treatments for hearing disorders, and the investment that we received was essentially for that. And in fact, Or Tiffany has continued to do that, and we brought compounds forward for that indication. Um, but there was less appetite to invest money in psychiatry research, and particularly in an area as complicated as schizophrenia. Innovate UK enables Ortiphany to put research and chemistry into that area and identify a compound, bring it all the way through to the start of clinical development, and then in a second uh, Innovate UK um, supported uh, grant, we were able to take that compound now into clinical trials. So it's been absolutely fundamental for this programme. Like a lot of innovative companies, or Tiffany are collaborating to ensure things move as quickly as possible. So we've recently formed a partnership with Boehringer Ingelheim to develop our compound for the treatment of schizophrenia. And they're a company which has uh, a lot of experience in this area. They currently have programs developing treatments for schizophrenia. And they were very interested and excited by the mechanism that we have brought forward, which is entirely novel. Well, Tiffany is a small company. We are able to bring compound into the clinic and initiate clinical trials, but we certainly benefit from their experience and their ability to take the compound further forward. Charles is keen to point out that key to the success of these treatments is patients' quality of life. So the, the treatment that we're developing is potentially groundbreaking. It's a completely novel mechanism. It's a mechanism that links into the pathology that we understand about the disease and really has the 
potential to make a huge difference to the lives of people with schizophrenia. And Rich, as you might imagine, has his own hopes for what these treatments might be able to do for him. I think if I did get my balance back, and you know, I think if these medications did improve, I, I think it would open a lot of doors for me. I feel like um, I, I haven't been, you know, better word, um, fit for work for a while. I have kind of, um, it would allow me to get back in the workplace. It would allow me to feel like, you know, functioning member of society again, like I can, you know, that I do have a use and I'm kind of not just, you know, this leech on the system. So I think it would, it, it would, it would, it'd be huge for me. It would allow me to kind of, you know, pursue maybe my uh, career, you know, my, well, my uh, hobby is a career even, or kind of even just being in work and kind of, you know, that, that, that kind of financial advantage and that, what would that do for my self-esteem would be quite meaningful to me. Yeah.